What's going on everyone? So today we're gonna to be doing something absolutely crazy. In fact, this is probably one of the craziest things that I've seen in a very long time. Full disclosure, I actually did already open this and so I know what it is, but this was sent from a viewer of the show and I cannot believe what they sent. Now, I don't know who sent this. So if you sent this, thank you, this is crazy. And I, when I opened this, I kinda had to take a second glance at it because I didn't really fully understand what I was looking at until I read what was in this box. It was pretty awesome. It was also very clear why they sent it. So when I first opened up the box, this is all I saw. And what stood out was this blue jar here that said Desert Seed Company. I said, oh, someone sent some seed donations. I thought, well, looks kinda like an old can. And this is some onion seed. This is some yellow Bermuda onion, full of onion seed. Now, I don't even know how old these are. These are probably, I would guess probably mid 70s if I had to guess. And so I don't think these onions are going to sprout, but still very, very, very cool. But then I saw these and these are Valiant Tomato Seeds from Sun, Sun Blessed Seed, Desert Seed Company. And I got so excited when I saw these because this reminded me of the Giant Crimson Saga. But what makes these especially cool is that these are hermetically sealed. I don't know if you can see that, but that says hermetically sealed. And that means that they are vacuum packed. And so I don't know how long, I mean, they're a little rusted up. I don't know how long these have been in here. I mean, I guess I probably would estimate early to mid seventies, I would think just based on like the can design and stuff, but you guys can let me know. I have no idea how old these are, but they are old and they are original. There's no doubting that one bit. And there's tons of seed inside, tons of seed, which is super crazy. So if you know me, and obviously you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know that I've got to sprout these. That's my knee-jerk reaction. When I see old seeds, I immediately want to sprout them. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna see if we can sprout these. Now, without obviously knowing exactly how old these are, I know that it's gonna be a challenge. It will not be nearly as hard though if they've been stored cool, dark, and dry, which I would imagine dry. I mean, hermetically sealed. I don't know if the rust has destroyed the seal or not. I'm not sure. We'll know when we open it up. but. We're opening up a time capsule and this will not be nearly as crazy as the giant crimson tomato. Now, if you don't know what the giant crimson tomato is, that was an incredible saga that we did probably I think about seven years ago now where we opened up 87 year old packets of tomato seed that were stored in a sealed glass case. It was a shadow box that was sold at an antique store and we bought it and we were able to sprout those seeds. Out of about 500 seeds that we tried to sprout, only two actually sprouted and one ended up surviving. And that tomato ended up being extinct, believe it or not. It was so crazy. And now we actually have brought that tomato back from extinction. You can see the whole saga. And I've learned a lot since those videos. Now, I don't think it's gonna be quite as difficult to sprout these, but by my estimation, I think these are from 1978. I don't know exactly, but there is a thing here that says test and the test date seems to be seven of 78, if that is what I'm actually reading. And so 78, still very old. That puts us at like roughly around like 50-ish years old. So 50 years old is really incredible. And so, you know, I'm really excited about this nevertheless, and I'm really excited to see if we can get these to sprout. Now I will say the Valiant tomato is not extinct. So there's not a high stakes, you know, high pressure environment here. It's just gonna be very fun to see if we can get these to sprout. But the other thing that I think would be really cool to note is that despite the fact these are not extinct, you can find them. There's other seed sellers that do sell the Valiant tomato. They're not selling the Valiant tomato with genes that are almost 50 years old. And that's what I think is always really cool about sprouting old seed is that over time, you actually have what scientists will call genetic drift. And if I can get kind of nerdy here for a second, genetic drift is basically a slow adaption to a changing environment. And so whether that's the soil has changed, the climate has changed, pests have gotten stronger or whatever, over time the plant has become adapted to those things. And if you were to take a Valiant tomato 50 years ago and compare it to a Valiant tomato of today, I think there'd be such a great difference that I don't think you could call it a true Valiant tomato. And I know that's crazy. And I guess 
to a lot of tomato growing purists, you'd say, well, it's still the same tomato. But over time, genetic drift has happened over 50 years. Genetic drift can happen in as little as 10 years, believe it or not. And so what we really want to make sure is that if we get these to sprout, that we actually can then compare. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to get online. I'm going to buy myself some valiant tomato seeds, and then we're going to sprout these, assuming we can get them to sprout. We're going to compare the two. And I'm really excited to compare because this is going to give us the first real test to see how much genetics have changed over the years, over 50 years. And uh, it's gonna be very exciting. So coming in close, let's open this time capsule up. I'm really excited to see what's in here. All right, so check it out. This is where it says hermetically sealed. It is preconditioned to a specific moisture content and packed under a atmospheric condition to retain high viability. That's awesome. It's so cool. So that's obviously kind of what you'd assume it would look like. Just a basic, it seems like it's kind of just a basic slicing tomato. From what I would see, it's got a good gel content, decent seeds. It probably has medium thick skin. It's probably comparable to most of your, your Heinz 55, your very basic tomatoes. Now, obviously it's on the way out. I could not find a whole ton online talking about the Valiant tomato. Only a few sellers actually had seeds for them. It's definitely being bred out of existence, but it's certainly something I don't want to happen. So we're going to be hopefully saving this for future generations. So let's crack this open here. This is, this is really exciting. You only get one shot to do this. So, goodness. The hermetic seal has been broken. This is, wow. That is, it's really clean on the inside. If you look at that white, it seems really, really nice. Okay, all right. I'm gonna dump them out here in this tray here. Now, I wiped these trays down. They're all clean, so there's nothing in here other than just the tray. And it's really important if you're spreading old seed that you keep things as clean and as sterile as possible. It's super important you do that. What we did is we actually, we wiped these down with some isopropyl alcohol to make sure that they're sterilized. Any mold or mildew spores are going to be killed. And then once it's dried, they're going to be good to go. So there's a ton of seed in here. I'm not going to dump actually all these seed out. There's, there's an ounce of seed. Well, okay. You know what? Sure. Why not? There's an ounce of seed in here. It's a lot of seed. It's so much seed. So I'm not going to sprout all these seeds, obviously. It's a ton of seed. We go. So yeah, there's that kind of the, the rusty bottom there. It's hard to tell if it, that's just surface rust or what, but the inside of the can looks pretty, looks pretty clean. So I'm really excited about this. This is very, very awesome. And that is a ton of seed. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some nice purified water here. It's really important to use some purified water because that way there is very little, if any, contaminants in that water to cause things like mold and mildew and stuff. So we're going to use the paper towel method to sprout these, but we're using it kind of with a hybrid paper towel method. Typically what you do is you would put the paper towel inside of a Ziploc bag. I don't like that because there's a lot of contact with the seeds and the top of the Ziploc baggie. I really like this method. It's also known as the Petri dish method because what it does is it keeps that humidity in there, which helps with seed germination, helps keep that moisture content high, which is very important for seed germination, but it doesn't create that condensation, which always is touching. And if it's always touching, these seeds are going to be weak. The viability will be very, very low. And so assuming these were kept cool, dark, and dry, it seems like it was pretty surface level rust. I think they were kept fairly dry. I'm assuming that they were hermetically sealed. So I think by all accounts, this has a really high chance of working, but we want to make sure that if there is any, any mold or mildew at all, that it's kept as minimal as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this purified water. We're going to dampen our paper towel. And we're simply going to tip it and we're going to adequately moisten the paper towel without having too much water. Big mistake is to have too much water because then the seeds are going to be flooded. So all we're doing is we're just soaking up by tipping the, the remaining water around and then we're going to give it a good tip to get any excess out. All right, now we're ready to start these seeds. The reason why we're not using a sugar soak, if you've seen that giant crimson episode, you'll know that we actually soaked the seeds in a little sugar water solution. And the reason why we're not is because I actually had a lot of people that are in the science field that recommended that we just use sterile water because modern day sugar can actually have a lot of bacteria and fungal spores. And because you know we don't have very high tech sugar, you know they, the sugar they would use in a lab setting would be way more purified and, and sterile than like just white cane sugar that we have. And so they really advised against it and said that you'd be probably better off and probably would have gotten the same results, if not maybe even better results with just using regular water, regular purified water. So we scratched the sugar. And again, that's just things that you learn through time. And so what I'm doing is I'm spacing these seeds out, I'm not using my fingers because your fingers have a ton of you know oils and there's you know bacteria and fungus, mold spores and stuff that 
your fingers pick up and I want minimal contact with that. So I'm just spacing these seeds out here. We are gonna put, I would hope probably around maybe, I'm gonna try to go for around 100 seeds. One final thing I learned with the Giant Crimson Saga is space between your seeds is so important. In fact, it's vital because inevitably, since germination is very, very low, the viability will be incredibly low. No matter what you're, you're sprouting, anything over about 10 years old, the, the viability begins dropping off pretty dramatically, but it never truly goes to true zero. That's what I found out as well, is that it never goes to true zero. You know, it starts out at maybe 99%, but then from, well, in our case here, when it was tested, it was 90% germination rate. So you go from 90% right off the bat, it's gonna drop off fairly quickly. You go from 90% down to 70% over the course of three or four years. But then as it gets older, the seeds that would have germinated at 10 years are probably still gonna germinate around 15 years. They've already survived most of that viability drop off. And so over time, you get actually closer and closer to 0% germination, but never at true 0% germination. And so because of that, you're gonna have a lot of seeds that don't germinate, but you have a high chance of at least one, if you have a good enough sample size, of actually germinating. The thing is, is that one cannot be too close to a bunch of other seeds that don't germinate because they are going to want to actually start to, to mold and to degrade once they get into some moisture. And so because there's gonna be inevitably some mold created in here when the seeds do not germinate, we wanna keep them away from the seeds that might be viable. So we're just gonna space them out about quarter inch apart or so, and hopefully that's enough spacing. That's another thing that I learned from the Giant Crimson Saga that I didn't think about prior. So we got our seeds in here and this is just a fun experiment. It's not high stakes, so regardless of what happens, it's gonna be a fun learning experience for us. All we're gonna do is we are going to simply cover these up. We're gonna put them in a nice warm location. We're gonna put them on a heat mat, nice consistent warmth. And uh, because they're damp and because they've got a nice, nice lid on top, the moisture should stay in there near the seeds. And so I'm hoping that we're gonna have some sprouts. What I need from you is a comment down below as to if you think they're gonna sprout and how many. Take a guess. I would love just to have this be a fun thing that we follow up on, and so I am really excited about this. Old seeds is something that just, like I said, gets me excited because we as, as a community always see heirloom seeds as kind of the gold standard of biodiversity. And they're kind of, without heirlooms, you wouldn't have a lot of the hybrids you have today which is two heirlooms that are crossed together, right? They're crossed to get something else, right? Other results. And so heirlooms are so vital to not only the current seed supply, but the future seed supply as well. And so I think it's just a really cool thing. Again, I don't know who sent these. I appreciate you so very much for sending these. Now, obviously I can't do a bunch of videos like this because they do take a lot of time, but they are fun every once in a while to do. And so what I always encourage you to do is to do them on your own. You know, when you find old seeds like this, try to germinate them on, their, on your own using these techniques that I showed you. It is very simple. Big thing, as I said, is ster sterility. Make sure that everything is sterile and as fast as possible so they're not left open to the air. And yeah, I'm really excited about this. You guys, really super exciting update. Come on in and check this out. This is crazy, you guys. Absolutely crazy. So this is from seeds from 1978 and we have got sprouts we've got sprouts this is so crazy we've got one two three four there's so many sprouts in here it's absolutely crazy like there's so many that are just starting to germinate we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventy eighteen nineteen twenty sprouts but there's so many more there's probably another i would say ten that have got little tap roots forming from seeds from 1978, you guys. This is absolutely crazy. So, so cool. So there we go, 13 sprouts and quite a few on the way. I don't technically know where that would put us for if you guessed down below, maybe that would be, I'd say anywhere between 13 and 20. Consider yourself a winner. Give yourself a big green thumbs up and a pat on the back. That was a really lucky guess. I'll be honest, I didn't think we'd get that many sprouts. I didn't know how many we'd get, I felt confident we'd get a couple just because we sprouted 87 year old seeds. These were much, much newer seed, much fresher seed in comparison to 87 years old. So at 50 so years old, I just thought, okay, maybe we'll get a couple, but I did not think 13 plus, like that is mind blowing. Now we do not have en enough time to really grow these out to full, to full maturity. I'm gonna throw these in some soil just to see what they do. Maybe we'll film some updates, but what I will do and what I want you guys to follow along with Next year, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start them again. Now that we know they have good germination, 
we're gonna start them again and we're gonna go online and we're gonna buy ourselves some Valiant tomato seeds because these aren't extinct, they're out there. And what I'd be really curious to do is to take these seeds, start them, and then do a comparison with the Valiant seeds that are out there today to see what has changed over the years, really compare what 50 years of growing and cultivating and seed saving can do to a variety, and just see how accurate they are when comparing. I think it'd be really cool to see. I'm very excited about it. And so that's kind of for, for next year. And so I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. And this is a, you know, this is also another thing, another final testament to seeds. Do not throw out your seeds. I see so many gardeners that they throw out seeds because they think they're old. If your seeds are kept cool, dark, and dry, it is shocking how long they can stay fresh for. And so don't throw your seeds out. Always give them a shot. Throw them in the ground. You never know what's gonna happen. And check out estate sales and garage sales and find yourself some old seed and try this yourself. Let me know in the comments box down below if you enjoyed this, what you're excited to see next. I appreciate your viewership. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care, bye. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, consider checking this one out. You'll probably enjoy it just as much. I wanna thank you so much for your viewership because without it, this channel would not be as amazing as it is. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's free. Consider doing that. We upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, rain or shine. And if you need any garden tools, supplies, or seeds, check out mygardener.com. We got you covered. See you guys in the garden. Bye.